God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I didn't see all the people over here, too. They kind of snuck in while we weren't paying attention. Welcome to everyone. And, and it's good to see so many faces all the way uh, today. I did realize while we were singing that, that uh, for the past year or so, I've been able to goof off during singing. And if I didn't want to sing, I didn't have to. <laughs> and now I'm trying and I've got to start belting it out again. So, uh, and we're so glad. I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, it is as always a joy and delight to be here and to share in the ministry uh, that your clergy are blessed to share with you here. Um, it is good, in all seriousness, to to have your rector Patrick here, and and uh, I'm sure you all have missed him as he's missed you just a little bit. Um, <laughs> I. I Watching and listening to Scott and Justin and other staff members talk about life during this quasi-sabbatical sort of reminds me of thing one and thing two and the cat in a hat. And, uh, anyway, good luck when you fully return. So. Um, well, I did get some good advice for this sermon this morning, uh, some good guidance first Justin came and met with me and filled me in on, on uh, many of the things that have been going on here uh, through Land and Easter with the Wednesday series and, and the Sunday series and, and how you've been hearing from clergy and lay people talk about the variety of ministries into which they have been called in the name of Jesus. And Justin gently suggested that I say something to you about my own call which I think is fascinating to me and probably not very many other people. Um, and then my wife, Patty, not so gently suggested that since Patrick is just now back that I should go easy on him. And I am, of course, grateful to Justin for his guidance. Well, at the Last Supper, Jesus is leaning in. He's intent on trying to get his disciples to understand what he has been about, what he is about, and what will be revealed in his self-offering on the cross. He has broken the bread and passed the cup, calling it his body and blood given for them. He has got down on hands and knees and washed their feet and called it his new commandment, a showing and a telling of what love looks like a glimpse of what the adventure of following him will be like. As you have during the past several weeks, the disciples have heard Jesus' invitation to come and see. And they have heard his call to follow me. But they, of course, are still learning. They will always be disciples, students. Their lives, their calling, their ministries will not be figured out or lived out dependent on their own power, their own intelligence, their good looks, their winsome personalities, their cleverness. They will be his friends and disciples doing and saying the kingdom things that Jesus has said and done because they will remain connected to him. They will be joined to him like branches are to a vine what they will be part of is nothing less than the life of God. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. I am the vine, you are the branches. Here's a bit of my story of God's call to ordain ministry. It is very personal, but it's not private. It actually involves this passage from John's Gospel, it involves Christ Church, it involves worshiping outside, and a whole bunch of high school students. So this is a good day for me to remember and say something about it. My call to ordain ministry came late one night. It was totally unexpected and not wanted at all. I was 21 and I had plans that did not include the church. And ironically, though, I was participating in some of the most wonderful, fun, and life-giving ministry that I've ever been part of at that time, working as a summer cabin counselor at Camp Capers. The 
call came during a late night service in St. Francis Chapel during senior high camp. If you haven't been there, the chapel is an open air stone building moving seamlessly from inside to outside out into God's wondrous cathedral, kind of like worshiping in your courtyard. Leading that session was a young priest from Christ Church named Melvin Gray. And the theme of our camp was John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. I can still see that banner that we made of burlap and felt and Elmer's glue, very old school <laughs> banner making. <laughs> I am the vine, you are the branches. I can't remember if Melvin was giving the talk in chapel that night or if it was another young priest serving as our chaplain, Mike Chalk. We were all gathered in there, tired and much sweatier than we are this morning, huddled around John 15, 5. It was a beautiful place in time, but still life is complicated and I was distracted by many things. And there in my confusion and distraction somewhere during the chapel talk, I did not hear the priest talking. I heard God speaking to me. I know, right? Y'all are sitting there very politely not reacting to this foolishness. I was born and raised Episcopalian, and it seems sort of weird and arrogant to think that God might speak directly to me. And it scared me also. I did not like it at all. <laughs> Whatever was in my mind that night was pushed aside, and I heard a voice say, as clearly as you are hearing my voice, God wants you to be a priest. And that's it. No trumpets. No train sounding, no, no angel choir, no thunder, no explanation at all. Just that voice breaking through in that moment. It did scare me badly, and I tried really hard to run away from it for a long time. Jesus says to us, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do no nothing. Now, I knew little of any of this that night in the chapel, but what I've learned over a lot of years since then is that what Jesus says is true. We are connected to him. We abide in him. We participate in his life. And in him, we are together. We abide together. We are bound up in him. Our lives are tangled up together like branches on the vine and the Holy Spirit inspires with the Holy Spirit breathes with the Father and the Son to draw us into the life of God and to send us out still abiding in God's life and love sends us out to be co-conspirators co-breathers with the Spirit participating in God's work in the world to bear fruit that nourishes and restores life and glorifies God. This abiding together in Christ, how we are united with him, even when we are separated by circumstances and distance, even by death, how we are united with him is a holy mystery. And yet we can see it fleshed out here and now and there and then if we take time to pay attention, if we open our eyes and our hearts and look around. My call to priesthood was and is very personal, but there were so many people who had a hand in me being in that chapel at all. Going back to grandparents and parents and long-suffering Sunday school teachers. And there were so many people who helped me and have continued to help me say yes to that call and have helped me discover that I did indeed have some gifts for that kind of ministry. If not for this parish being willing to share a priest with high school campers from around the diocese, I never would have met Melvin Gray or spent a week immersed in the good news of John 15. 
Jesus is the vine and we are the branches across time and across space. Jesus says, I am the vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. I am the vine, you are the branches. I think it's safe to say that there has been an awful lot of very painful pruning over the past year and more. Much has been cut away in the life of the church and in the life of our beloved country. The pandemic has messed us all up, unless you on stock in Netflix, <laughs> or maybe, maybe a liquor store. <laughs> And how we have been most messed up may be in all the ways that we have been cut off from one another, from so much that truly matters in our lives. We've been separated from one another. We've been cut off from ordinary things that bring order and stability and contentment. And we've been cut off from so many of the deeper things that help us make sense and find joy together to abide with one another. As our churches begin to reopen and reemerge and restart, we are entering a time of sifting and sorting. What has been lost that we will regain? What has been withheld that we will embrace again? What have we learned? What have we been forced to learn that has been life-giving and we'll want to keep? What are we just sick and tired of? It will be a time for our churches to examine their ministries, their vocation to bear fruit, and to consider what parts of church life may have passed their expiration date and discover new ministries that are coming to life. We will do this work well and faithfully if we, we remember that we are branches of the vine Jesus, that we are members of the one body, the risen Christ, the pruning work belongs to the vine dresser, not to us. The questions center around what needs pruning, not who needs pruning, as tempting as it is, and everybody's got a list. God is the vine dresser, and it is to him that the work of pruning belongs. And God prunes so that the branches may breathe and get sunlight, may flourish and bear fruit. Questions for our churches, questions for each of us might be, what are the things in my life that God needs to prune, to cut back so that new life and new growth can happen? What does God need to cut away so that we can thrive as branches of the one true vine? How do we help those who have drifted away in sadness or in anger be grafted again onto this living vine? How do we grow anew as a people who inside and outside our buildings bear fruit that glorifies God and who speak and embody Jesus' invitation to come and see and respond to his call to follow me? I never found a good ending for this sermon. Sorry, I thought about turning to Patrick and saying, take it from here, <laughs> bring it on home. So let me just say, thank you. Thanks be to God for you, for being a church that indeed conspires with the Spirit. Thank you for being a church that in spite of all pandemic challenges and disappointments has found a way to share good news of Jesus and offer joy and hope in so many ways. Sidewalk Saturdays, a 40-piece orchestra on Good Friday. What was that about? It was amazing. That's what I heard. All of the things that you have done in conspiracy with the Holy Spirit to make Christ known, worshipped, and obeyed. Thank you for your abiding love and care for your clergy who love and care for you. The weight and cost of their love during COVID can scarcely be imagined, but they do know themselves to be grafted onto the true vine who nourishes and sustains them. They know that they abide 
in you with Jesus. Thank you for being a church family that calls, gathers, forms, and sends not just clergy to go to Camp Capers, but people, all kinds of people and of all kinds of ages with all kinds of gifts to go out into daily life going each week our separate ways but never separated, knowing surely that we belong to Jesus. And acting boldly on that, we go to bear fruit for the life of the world. In my mind, in my imagination, that old burlap banner is still flying. I am the vine, you are the branches. His banner over us is love abiding. Amen. Amen.